Monday, February 12th, 2024. This is the meeting of the Gettysburg Borough Stormwater Authority. Good evening. Um, we're call I am calling this meeting to order. I have no particularly uh, particular welcoming remarks. Here's Pat. Hello, Pat. Um, but there is an announcement. And the announcement is that we have in the audience Kurt Kramer, you pick me yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> he sticks out like a sore thumb at this meeting. And uh, if all goes well with the borough council meeting that follows this one, uh, Kurt will, I know it's, you're, you're sweating, uh, Kurt will be joining our board uh, at our next meeting. So, Kurt, I'm welcoming you in advance you, in Michael. anticipation of. Um, being appointed by the Borough Council. Welcome. And your term is for five years. Uh, <laughs> or until death, do, you, or until death do you part. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, welcome. Kurt brings a wealth of, a, of a leadership experience. Um, he has done a lot of work with um, YMCAs over his uh, career. Um, he knows facilities and uh, for the most part, he has very good judgment, as far as I know. So, so my wife tells me. That. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good decision on your part, by the way. So, so welcome. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we are um, moving to our approval of the agenda, minutes, and other business, which is really our consent agenda. Um, we vote on all of these together, as you will um, remember, and so. Uh, we have a motion to approve the agenda as presented, a motion to approve all bills and payrolls as presented, and a motion to approve the January 8th um, meeting minutes. And the Janu yeah, the January 8th business meeting minutes, right. And organizational <coughs> meeting minutes. Karen, thank you for putting both of them there. Any questions? Comments? I will entertain a motion to approve these all in one motion. So moved. Thanks, John. Second? Second. Thanks, Charles. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposition, same sign. Not hearing any, that passes. Uh, public comment. It's time for public comment. Uh, since you're the Speak only public against here. the nomination of the <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> um, uh, let's turn now to financial updates, please. Uh, Charles Gable. Uh, yes, so the Wow, you can really read that It's clear. Yes, it is As it should be There we go, that's what it's this is the year-to-date numbers for 2023. Uh, go straight to the bottom line because that's of the greatest interest. You'll see uh, the authority uh, generated just over $533,000 in fiscal year 2023, and that is January through December for the authority, even though our billing cycles are July to July. Um, expenditures are only 195000 giving us a surplus of $337,000 for the year, um, largely because there was really no large capital projects uh, last year. So that money currently sits in the authority's checking count, which is where uh, there's too many of these open. There it is. Uh, currently, the authority has $710,000 uh, in its account for use. And we know we have a significant amount of uh, big projects coming up, one of which we'll be talking in a little bit more detail uh, in this meeting. So that's a synopsis of where the authority stands financially. We don't have any short-term investments out, right? No. If you remember when we were doing the Culp Stream restoration, we did have a CD. Right. Um, that but the, those funds have been expended on that project. Okay. Okay. Is there any reason why we shouldn't look at any short-term? We could very much, very well do that. Yeah. 
if um, it's okay with everybody, I think if if you would take yep. a look at that. Uh, yeah. I just invested over a million dollars for the borough today <clears throat> at a very favorable rate of 5.39% for a 90-day term. 90 days? Yeah. Yep. So, well, we could certainly look at that. I think we should. Thank you. Any questions, comments? All right. Deborah, payments. We are down from our last meeting. We had 111 um, parcels still not paid. Uh, they've come down, trickling down to around 54. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a couple of issues with our PSN and some incorrect payments being loaded, um, which caused some riff with some of the public. Um, we did have to shut down PSN for a few days uh, and then get that corrected so that the correct payments would be billed. Um, on there, so that is up and running now. So we're looking at roughly um, five thousand six hundred and sixty-four dollars and thirty-two cents that is still owed with the remaining fifty-four parcels that have not paid. Adam and I have been coordinating with um, which ones you know will be receiving a lien once we kind of go through uh, what's been paid because it, it was shut off on the eighth. But if somebody mails it on the eighth, it still could you know come in this week with a, a snail mail payment, and we don't want to you know, lean someone that's, you know, sent their bill in, so. Yeah, give them, give them that time, the grace And then period. once Freedom um, writes off the liens, they won't be able to pay through PSN anymore, so I probably will maybe try to shut that down, but normally once we uh, switch the <coughs> liens or whatever's due to the lien system in Freedom, then they can't make any more payments, so. Okay. Unless they pay the, you know, solicitor's fee, the court fees, and all the other additional fees that are on there for the lien, so. That's kind of where we are. Okay. Are any of those uh, frequent flyers? Yes. I would say somewhere between 8 and 15. I'd have to double check because we're still so. waiting. There's a, a pretty good amount that maybe half of that or have never paid since 2019. <laughs> and then the other half are spotty where they didn't pay a couple years here and there. So. I would, yeah, I would say I, I could give you a definitive number with enough time, but probably five or so. Yeah. Have been not not from the beginning. So should we send a, something out to those particular ones that have never paid or processed the lien at this point since they are clearly not planning on paying? This is my thought. It's up to the authority. I would file the lien, and if we want to do something more, I, I, I think we're going to confuse these people okay. more if, if we're about to file a lien and then don't okay. to then say you have four liens or whatever against you and you're about to have a fifth one, I think that's going to be more work okay. to keep track of. Okay, yeah, it's better to, to bring everybody up and say, okay, who, who do we have? And, and what, what's, your, what's your rationale for not paying okay. this, essentially? <laughs> they will eventually get paid when the property sells or they refinance or they're sheriffed. But Right. In the meantime, they're accruing interest and, you know, significant additional costs that are completely avoidable, frankly. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have a separate discussion about this, about sort of what to do next, you know, I, I think we can do that at a, at a future meeting and not confuse things now. Um, yeah. And then we can just talk about it. Okay. I would not pull out the consistent non-payers and not lean them at the expense of people who, for whatever reason this year, have not paid. I, I don't think you want to distinguish them from anybody else at this point. That's my, okay. my sense. Mm -hmm. Well, don't some utilities, like if they file lien after lien after lien, like every four years or whatever, try to clean off their books, try to collect on those liens? and mm -hmm. Some authorities do that. Yeah. We could talk about that in more yeah. detail. Yeah, okay. I, I think this is an right. interesting discussion, a detailed discussion that mm -hmm. we could have later. Yeah. We'll get through this season first. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> just, just to continue the discussion, um, <coughs> Deborah and I were sending a number of emails back and forth. Um, I always... Um, cross-reference all this, you know, the information that's pulled from freedom. Um, 
from the beginning it's been interesting to me because of the reports that are generated the formatting is inconsistent, which to me always suggested that there was a reason to, I won't say mistrust it, but just verify it. Some are in all caps, some are not. Some are first name, middle name, last name, some are reverse, some have commas, some don't. It's all over. Um, and there's always, um, I marked them today, um, I think there were probably eight or ten. Uh, when you file the lien, you want to have it match the property. And sometimes in the system they don't have middle names or they just have one person and there's, you know, a husband and wife that co-own it. Um, so I always check them and that doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence. And I'm not saying that's anybody in this room's fault. I'm not saying that's Freedom's fault. But, but somewhere there is a breakdown that um, I always try to just be very diligent in making sure that we're filing these liens correctly because frankly if they're not filed correctly it's just going to confuse everybody. The fact that an invoice might have gone out and not had someone's <coughs> middle initial is not, does not mean that they do not owe the money, I mean, to, to be clear. But you don't want to cause any confusion when you actually have a lien filed at the courthouse that does not match the property owner's exact name the way they have titled the property. So um, working through that, um, it seems that there are three, maybe four, uh, properties that were sold in the past year. Um, some by local um, law offices or settlement companies, um, at least one from a county or two away, where the property was sold and nobody called for payoff. Um, and I think sometimes people just forget to do that because it is still relatively new. They think to call the tax collector um, to verify whether the taxes were paid. They don't necessarily have that muscle memory yet to call the stormwater authority. Um, so for those, once we're sure that they truly did not pay, um, I'm going to reach out to those settlement companies and law offices and say, you know, it's my understanding that you, well, I know you conducted a settlement. Here's the deed, and it's my understanding you didn't pay it or your client didn't pay it. Can you confirm? Um, and generally speaking, that prompts those folks to write a check and therefore avoid the lien, which is what we want. So it's working through all that. I just want to make sure that we have the correct information, you know, so that we're doing it correctly, but also so the authority doesn't right. look unorganized. Um, and again, I'm not suggesting that's anybody's fault in this room or otherwise, but these are the things we have to be careful about because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not talking two, <laughs> you know. We're talking fifty couple, um, and I suspect it won't be that many till we get down to it. It'll probably be forty or so, which is where we typically track at. Right, right. Pat, did you have a question? Yeah, I, I did. I don't want to get too far in the weeds here, but we didn't get notified who who should have done that. The uh, title company or whoever's doing the settlement, the bank. Um. So generally speaking, when you're doing a settlement whoever the settlement company is in order to make sure that their buyer or their client has clear title will call, you know, for the tax collector, they'll call GMA. <coughs> Anything that's a lienable utility um, or a government charge, essentially, you call that agency or okay. that level of government and say, can you verify that the taxes were paid? Can you verify that this fee was paid? So that they don't issue a title insurance policy that then could be Okay, but when I you have this other municipal charge that should have been dealt with that wasn't that that's but, yeah, but when we file a lien, we file that at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So why didn't they check there? Well, they do you're looking at it the other way. If somebody's selling a property that has a lien on it, they'll call and pay it off. These are for properties that sold in the past year. Mm -hmm. In 2023, we didn't have liens on them. Not oh, yet, because okay. the bill wasn't yeah, right. due, but they should have called and said, can you verify whether okay. the bill right. was paid, and if not, pay it at closing. Okay. Just like you would pay your property taxes out of closing if the bill was issued but not yet due, so that you don't have that fight over who's responsible okay. for it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, like I said, three, maybe four, um, that didn't recall to do that, which really isn't okay. that bad. Um, it wasn't, wasn't a lien then, it was an unpaid yes. bill. Right. The, okay. the bill had been issued. It was not yet due. <coughs> the settlement company generally calls, and they, and they should call, 
um, but it appears that some of them just forgot or, or maybe that wasn't their role. Maybe they just prepared a deed, didn't actually host a settlement. That or could be too. So I always reach out and say, you know, do you want to pay this? Would you like us to go ahead and file this lien? Just as a courtesy, I tell them, you know, you, you may be getting a call. <laughs> They generally do pay because I've had some where I've called after settlement and they've neglected to call for the payoff, and they usually send the check right away within a week. I bet they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have <laughs> one title insurance. Yeah, on their backs. <clears throat> okay. So we'll we'll see, um, but I'm I'm hoping uh, that we can get these filed. I'd like to do it this month. Um, not that I'm I don't want to rush a lien if we can avoid it, but oh yeah, that's right. At a certain point, I mean, they they were mailed in July. They were due at the end of the year. They got a certified and first class letter in January saying pay in 30 days. <coughs> it just becomes, frankly, more difficult to keep track of this right. um, if we kind of do this in slow rolling waves. <laughs> so, okay. All righty. Any other questions? Nothing. Okay. Chad, your show from. Now till the end, <laughs> just about. So the next item on the agenda is the Bream Alley. As you know, we have a retaining wall that we need to replace. Um, permitting is in hand. Um, did speak to the property owner there that we need to get an easement from. So we're in the process of getting that. I don't really have a whole lot more to update you guys on tonight. Uh, that's going to get bid with GMA's project sometime this summer, we're assuming. Um, they want to be under construction by the end of this year. So... That still, that still remains. By the way, that's not Bream Alley. Oh, oh, we don't have pictures of Bream. That it, uh, no, that's no, not Bream Alley. No, but that no. is another topic. That, uh, yeah, we'll get we can to jump that. Jump right into that one, Charles. If you want to keep that up. So GMA doesn't have a date that they're going to bid yet. No, not exact date. I think they're still working through some permitting they submitted, I believe, to you for HOPs. Okay. Still working on some permitting things. They got to get HOPs from the borough among HOPs with. The state, I think they have all of their DEP <coughs> permits in place, um, finalizing some easements and things like that. So I think they're getting close, but I don't know that they, I've, I haven't heard a date just mid year, and they definitely want to be under construction by the end of the year. That's that's what I know. Uh, Green so, Alley is going to be toward the end of that project. Yes, yeah, so I would assume so. If that, that project starts right. down on Water Street, so right. typically they start down and work their way up. Now, that the, they don't have to. We can't govern that, per se, but that's I would, I would assume that Bream Alley won't be until next year. Yeah. So the expense to the authority for replacement of that wall won't be until next year, if I had to guess. So I'll continue to keep that on your agenda here just to get you an update, but it's just going to be a kind of a slow playing it here until, until it's bid. Um, but so Charles put up some some pictures of the retaining wall. So Bream Alley is one of the the channel walls that we look at, and on a biannual basis, we take a look at some of the worst pieces of this. And he has some pictures up here of some of the areas that are that are that we're monitoring. Um, the last monitoring report that I just got on Friday from our structural engineer was not great. Um, nothing that we didn't already know. But he's saying that there are some areas where it is starting to, the, the, the walls are rotating, the rocks are falling out, there's other places in our, in our wall system that, that we kind of know that are, fa that are failing. Pieces that are past just being able to do maintenance to. So these are walls that are going to have a significant construction um, cost when it goes to replacement. Now some of these sections he's, th he's thinking that we can maybe just remove a little bit of the top just to buy some time put something in there like rock or something like that if it does get to the point where it looks like it's going to fail um, so that is something that we have kind of in our back pocket but the the real important thing about this is um, it's it's time to start looking towards what are we going to do about these things because they are an imminent failure um, and if they fail then there's a lot of lot of issues that we have to, to try to react to. So that's the stretch between, it's, uh, it parallels Water Street. Water Street to one the right. There's one right. of parallels Water right. Street. Oh, you know, um, this one here is, oh, no, that's, that's yeah, this is um, the City Mart. Yeah. That's Cockle's Corner, or, uh, used to be Cockle's Corner place, that's, right on the corner. Yeah, of so, so this is Late Night Bites, that little building there. Yeah. 
and this is the City Mart in Carlisle Street. And this one here is, that's middle, middle Street there. But you can see how the wall's rotating. The, bottom, the top of the wall is out significantly further than the bottom. And somebody already put a brace in back further. I'm not sure if that was you guys back in the day or not. But and We um, did that. Sure that we did the right. wall off the bridge and put mm -hmm. um, But that pipe was there when we did that. Okay. Yeah, it's been there probably 50 years. That's even before my time. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So these are just two examples of about <coughs> a half a dozen places that we check that are on our high priority that we do. We check um, biannually to see if, if they've been rotating, and, and we have been seeing signs of significant rotation a couple of these stretches. So. I have a question, Jim. Yeah, looking at Middle Street there, that iron whatever going across there, is that a brace or is that a pipe? That's a brace, yeah, yeah. That's the what we're, that's what John and I were just talking about. That he's Are you saying talking it's underneath best. the bridge itself. No, that's You're a pipe under the bridge. No, the one up right top, there, the, yeah. the one that looks like it's yeah, right that's a brace. The one it's yeah. bent. That's yeah, a brace. Yeah, the, the, this right here, the brace itself is bent. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I think the 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 next steps, if I had to play to play out a, a path forward here is we first need to decide if this is something that the borough and the stormwater authority um, have, are going to make a decision that the borough is going to own these things or if we're going to require the property owners to, make, to, to own and maintain them. So I think that's the first step. Once we make that decision, I think we could create a map that shows exactly which walls that if, if the authority and the borough says, yep, we're going to have to own these things. We're going to have to maintain these things and replace them. Then the next step is we create a map that shows exactly which walls we're talking about, have a policy drafted by the solicitor. I don't know if it's a resolution or what it is. It says, okay, this is this. we intend to start taking ownership of these things and then go through the process of literally doing that. Uh, with, so with so what you're suggesting, excuse me, what you're suggesting is a significant step for the borough. Mm -hmm. And oh, the... Yeah. The assumption it's a it's a formal acceptance of the responsibility for the walls because, as we know, the borough has done a heck of a whole lot of work on these walls since roughly the late '40s, early '50s. And so the stormwater authority can only take can take one of two actions. You can either require the property owner to maintain these things, or you maintain them yourselves. Um, if you're going to maintain them yourselves, you need to own them first. Okay. Currently, we don't have a lot of records that shows it, that proves that one way or the other, um, but whenever we applied for funding for Bream Alley, we didn't get the funding, uh, but it's kind of a moot point. The point is we couldn't apply for funding anywhere else because we don't have clear ownership of any of these walls. That's right. So the first step to starting to replace these walls is to get ownership from the, of them. And I would say that and before you start even getting ownership of just one of them, you make a policy on the whole thing with a map that shows all of the walls that you intend to take ownership of and which ones you don't intend to take ownership of. For instance, there's some, I'm going to call it more like a culvert that goes underneath of a structure or a building, and those, I wouldn't suggest that, the, that you would start with those. We're talking about the walls where the, it's open to the air, there's no structure on top of it, um, those kind of things. If the borough wanted to take ownership of it, the first thing you have to do is create an easement or a right of way and take uh, or talk to the property owners. You have them dedicate that right of way to the to the borough. I would assume, not the authority here. Right. Um, you guys are the funding mechanism for these projects, but really not the owner. Ultimately, that that takes the borough council as well. No. May, may I make a just to keep it moving here? Um, this is going to require a lot of legal work. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm looking at Adam to say, can you give us an order of magnitude or a listing of how you would go about doing this? And then some some potential dollars in, involved, because whether we do it or the borough does it, there's going to have to be s some agreement about who's paying, and someone's going to need to know, again, what the order of magnitude is in dollars. Sure. You know, to do this, Pat. Yeah, uh, it seems to me like the first thing is to determine ownership, and and I don't see that as it's been mentioned. That it seems like the borough needs to make that policy decision because we're not going to own it. 
uh, we right. could maybe recommend that the borough own them, but uh, we've had this discussion before. It seems like we can go in circles on this, but the uh, uh, sidewalks, for example, yeah, I just paid a couple thousand dollars to <laughs> redo our sidewalk, and that's the policy throughout the town. Uh, yeah, and, I, and then I come to find out that the borough does own my sidewalk, so <laughs> after I paid for it. But uh, I don't think I don't think we should necessarily assume that we're gonna that we own it, and if the property owner owns it, it's their responsibility to fix it. Just like all the sidewalks, right? Well, the sidewalk is an ordinance that that requires the property owner to maintain it, and that's what we're saying about these walls because half of these walls don't even show up on deeds. Okay, They're well, just they there. have to do. Yeah, you know, if it's clearly defined, I, I'm not sure why we would assume that responsibility if the landowner clearly owns it and has the responsibility. <clears throat> So, so I, I think this is the argument that the borough has to decide yeah. on because I, there are, and I've seen it because I've read these minutes, um, there are certain properties in the borough that the borough has said, we will maintain these walls. Right. Okay. Over on, St on um, Stratton. Stratton, those houses on Stratton around the bridge, on one side of the bridge, um, for example. So it's, it becomes a, a Harry Eastman and you discussion about how to proceed. And I think I'm always coming down with the money. <laughs> how much is this going to be? And I presume since the borough will be the owners that they will pay for it, the legal work. But I'm, I'm saying that's, right. that's, that's got to be estimated. And, you know, we should at least know what's going on there. Some, some time ago, to your, to your point, Pat, um, and I can't recall off the top of my head how long ago it was, I think Mike had asked me to pool eight properties. Mm -hmm. and, and you were going to look at some things too, right, Mike? Oh, Mike, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. I okay. looked at so thorough minutes. So we do know some things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on every one that I looked at, everybody's deeds, and, and we're talking very old legal descriptions generally. Mm -hmm. go to a point in the stream bed. So the walls are on people's property. I don't recall seeing any of those eats. Now, I'm not going to say that, that I looked at every single one. We're talking a lot of properties, you know, mm -hmm. that front on these various channels and streams. But of the select random few that we pulled, none of them said that the line stopped at their side of the wall. So the walls in, in every one that we randomly looked at are on people's properties. That doesn't mean it's the case universally, but generally speaking, it's like these people owned the center of a stream, and then at some point the wall appeared. Mm -hmm. You know, who built it? And it gets, it gets cloudy mm -hmm. because I can, uh, and I copied minutes, where you had people having their <coughs> walls approved by the borough. You can follow it in the borough minutes in the 30s. Certain property owners said, you know, so-and-so uh, once came to the borough council, said, I want to build a wall. Yeah. My property's flooding. My, right. Yeah. Okay. And they said, great. You bring us the plans. Oh, we approve it. And then after it's built, we approve it. And, and, and that was done. And the property owner paid for it. And the property owner paid for that's, it. So that's where I am. I mean, mm -hmm. I... It seems like we're looking to assume this responsibility where I'm not sure why, where the precedent, my limited, very limited knowledge mm -hmm. is that the, the property owner, I mean, there's a case over in Harrisburg where some auto dealership slipped into a, <laughs> you've oh, under, the bridge. Yeah, under yeah. the bridge. Under the bridge. Yeah. yeah. And, Parking and, garage and, uh, on top of the The city didn't do anything. The landowner had to do it all. And, and that just seems to be yeah, the precedent. Well, I think in the I think it was in the '60s when the federal government gave out what they used to call Title III money. Mm. The borough went through and built walls where walls didn't exist, repaired walls and everything else. And then, of course, the federal government and Title III money came to an end, and so did those projects. 
-hmm. But then from that point on, whenever there was a wall problem, the borough just kind of inherited it and we fixed them. So if you look at this picture right here, let me get my orientation from behind, if you going this way, there is a section of poured concrete wall that I think well, we probably did that. that the borough did. That's looked like a Leroy Angel job because yeah. it's it's unbelievably a great wall on both sides, and there's a bridge, not that bridge, but certainly something like that bridge on an alley, right, Chad, right behind it, and so. Oh, that's right off Gillian now. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was Leroy. Yeah. That's Leroy's yeah. work. Yeah. And, uh, and then we repaired the wall right. just Across west on that little bridge, um, that, that, that whole area that failed, we being the borough. So it's well, going to get convoluted in our and, hurry. And part of that area is a little, is a little bit more convoluted because there's an alley right beside the wall there. Right. Right. And that clearly was the borough, the easy way out, is that the borough owned <laughs> that portion. So that was, easy, that was, that was an easy yeah. fix. Mm -hmm. It wasn't next to private property like that is. Yeah, those easy ones, that one and Bream are the ones where clearly the borough has the ownership. Right. right. But there's going to be many other ones here coming up soon where, and, and I think part of, part of the issue, you know, pa back to the... the comparison to sidewalks, right? So sidewalks are a couple thousand dollars replaced. Part of the issue with these walls is they're hundreds of thousands of dollars replaced. So in many cases, the wall along a property is more valuable than the property itself. Right. And it's, 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 it's not realistic sometimes that a property owner would, be, would ever replace these things. So then essentially the decision would be that you're waiting to, it to, to fall in, at what point we would have to go in and dig it out. Um, we can't just let it clog the, the, the stream, the stream right. because it would cause a significant amount of flooding if you just let it clog the stream. And a lot of these are going to be hell to get to because there's no way to get any equipment in. And DEP does not smile upon you when you put equipment in the stream. <laughs> we need permits for a lot of course, but yeah, it just seems to me like if our sample showed that for the most part the landowner owns to the middle of the stream, which in my very limited experience is valid. The, the complication usually is the stream moves, but not in this case, such a <laughs> case in concrete. But the, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't see us charging off to do this work until you get the ownership. And then if... Uh, yeah, if we decide to do it for the greater good, uh, that seems to be a well. The borough, borough will decide. Issue. It, it, oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a borough. We talk like we own it, but we don't. No. It's a, it's clearly a borough issue, and what I'm saying is, I guess the short version is, Adam, you need to talk to Harry to tell him this is coming, mm -hmm. and then Charles, I don't know where this is on the borough council agenda because I know it, as I recall, when they talked about their seven or eight things that they want to do for this year. This uh, wasn't on this it. This wasn't on it. And, and this is a big ticket item. Yeah. Charles? Also, the financing, we have 700000 in the bank, so oh. that's not going to be able to be Not even close. This. So there would be grant yeah. applications, and then we have had some trouble with grant applications. Yep. So what kind of time frame are you thinking? When, what, what can you, I know you can't predict when that's going to be over the line, but. Yeah, unfortunately, my crystal ball is broken right now, so I don't know, but it's, it, it's there is um, a couple of these, I believe, this one right here, where Jared's suggesting within the next year we should go out there and at least remove some of the top of that wall so it doesn't start, the weight of the wall starts to pull on the wall whenever it rotates sure. starting to fit. So you can remove some of the top of the wall so that that doesn't happen, it won't pull the piece of the wall that, where most of the storm events just to buy some time, but that would just be a that would be a real quick band aid fix that you know our public works crew could maybe. Yeah, that's it. You know, then we like uh, that. well here again here's the part of the problem. That wall, how are you gonna get there with a piece of equipment? Back to John's point. Right. <laughs> None of this is easy. Right. 
I mean, without setting something down in mm -hmm. the channel, yeah, which you're, is a no no. <laughs> you'd get a permit for that, and then you'd have to, well, you'd probably maybe you'd have to yeah, rent a piece of equipment. You'd get permits for that. Well, I was trying to limit it against them all the time. For, a public, for my public work, <laughs> what do they do? You're going to have to contract that out. But I thought we yeah. covered this, we've, we've talked about all this before, yes. and, uh, and I thought one of the problems with getting grants is you have to prove ownership before right. the grant yeah, engagement yeah, so you even yeah. accept it. So Exactly. Uh, it seems to me like the ownership and all that needs to be decided by the borough, so we've got to put it firmly on their plate, otherwise we're going to talk about it again, <clears throat> come up with the same non-solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Oh, I, I, I think we all violently agree. Yeah. Okay. And, and so the, the, the question, I think this is the first time we've talked about getting it on the borough agenda, how to do that in a way that uh, <clears throat> conveys how important this is, short-term and long-term. So well, I'm, for the, I'm, I'm looking for ideas. For the last 30 years, the borough's been reactive to these walls. You don't do anything till it falls in. Right. And then you run around like a chicken with your head cut off to get it fixed before the flood comes through. That's right. And that's the way it's always been. And that certainly isn't a good way to approach it, but that's the way these have all been approached. Yeah. And Part of the reason is that we, even even when we had a bigger highway crew, uh, these jobs become very time consuming and you have to be very careful because you start out with 10 foot of wall to replace and you start to work on it. Next thing you know, you're at 15. Next thing you know, you're at 20. Just like this one on, on the right hand side where I see those rocks out. Now, it looks like from that piece of railroad that's holding it on, you could you could repair that section in between those railroads, but I will guarantee you from experience, once you take that top stone off, and maybe the second stone, mm -hmm. you're gonna get into a domino back. effect that is gonna be ugly, ugly, <clears throat> ugly. Been there, done that. Have the t-shirt. So, yeah. you know, your, your, your budget for 10 or 15 feet of wall, all of a sudden goes to 20 feet of wall, and then the borough manager's on your ass because where are yeah. you supposed to come up with this kind of money? And I'm not, I'm not suggesting we don't do anything. I'm suggesting that we define what we're going to do and then. Well, I'm thinking we should find somebody the responsibility of doing it. I think we should do something formal, whether it's a a. a Whether it's a borough resolution, ordinance but that says about how we, we should send something to the borough saying it's time to get off the pot. Yep. Well, yeah, and to do that, we need to have a recommendation, yeah, recommendation included right. in there somewhere. So yeah, that's what we need. We need a recommendation to send down to the borough. Yeah, because I think that's our first step. I agree with right. you. I think, I think that's yep. the first step from, from this board because there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. And... Part of that recommendation is assigning them the responsibility of what to do with the ownership thing. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole thing, but it doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think we need to recommend to the borough council um, that they need to clarify the ownership of the walls. It's it's a little just a little bit deeper than that. If the homeowner owns it, do we accept any responsibility? Well, I I wouldn't we I wouldn't talk about the homeowner yet. What I would talk about is putting it on their plate that the ownership of these walls is a significant issue now. Yeah, but it seems to me like. If we don't lay the whole thing out to them, we'll just solve it one step at a time, which could take more time than if we say, A, we have to determine ownership. B, if the homeowner owns it, but it's in deteriorating condition, are, are we going to accept any responsibility for fixing it for the loan, landowner? Or do we have to take ownership of it before we do it? Well, I... I <laughs> We're getting into a lot of detail, and mm -hmm. what just hit me is, is, is there a, a time that the borough council has a work session that we can have this discussion? Yeah, we can add it. 
and at the end of this those month, of us who want to go to the works, tell them that, you know, those of us who can make the work session will show up. You need to be there too, Anne. And, and, and Chad, that the authority would like to come in and just talk about this. Then we could talk about the nitty gritty detail with them. And said, because I can imagine a resolution or, or a recommendation just going on and on, because there are a lot of important issues here. Yeah, I, frankly, I tr try to keep it out of nitty gritty details, just get the concepts so we're all on the same page, and then we can work the details out from there. Exactly, but I would rather sit down with them face to face, like no. we've done with people who have had problems with us, and just talk about it. And uh, so we can ask each other questions. Um, yeah, we can put together like two or three slides, one with some pictures of, of a half a dozen different locations of where they're 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 failing. Yes, an estimate because we do have we did some analysis on this. You know, we know this thing's multi millions, four or five million dollars, and what we're talking about, and maybe a map that says, okay, here's where some of these walls are. You know, a, a really two thousand foot view type of a map, and just right. kind of get the the idea. Everybody. Pretty much knows that Stevens Run goes through the, the borough, so this isn't going to be news to anyone. Getty's Run, please get it right. Yeah, Getty's <laughs> Run, right. Um, <laughs> um, but here it is. I see ownership as the big issue, also having to do with borough and individual, okay, and then financing. Those are the two big issues uh, at at you know thirty thousand feet. Well, the, the other thing to to be mindful of is regardless of who's owning it. I mean, if the borough is touching this stuff, I mean, you're going to need easements to get in there. You're going to need all sorts of indemnity. I mean, because if you start moving things and people's yards collapse, or some of these buildings are right, right. on those walls. I find it amazing, truthfully, that seemingly no one has really ever asked this question before. I mean, we're talking dozens of yeah. properties. That, that front along these channel walls and that no one has ever come to the borough and said, I'm considering buying this property. Who is responsible for that? Hmm. Nobody talks about them. Yeah. When when they collapse, nobody calls the borough and says, oh, your wall collapse out here. <laughs> it's like, uh, we don't want to uncover that stone. <laughs> right. You know, and then the borough finds it and we go out and they say, oh, you're fixing the wall. And we say, well, we're attempting to. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. ownership, the people that have been around this for a long, long, long time, they don't want to broach a subject. Because mm -hmm. I think half of them are afraid that they do own it. The emperor has no clothes. The walls have no rotation. It has to do on planning related to land development and decisions about land development that are, connect, are close to these walls. Remember the right. one recently? Mm -hmm. And I think well, the, the decision was not to do a particular development because the wall was fragile, if I remember that one correctly. Mm -hmm. Which one do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Smart choice. <laughs> so, so what are the next steps? I'm looking at the administration. I'm looking at Charles. Um, well, I, I can get it on the council's work session agenda for later this month. And we can start that conversation then. Can um, you let us all know what date that is and time? Yes. And February 26th. At seven. And can can we get on that agenda? Yeah, yeah I'll put you on there. Chad, can you put together a, a dog and pony show yeah, with <laughs> two weeks? Yeah. I, I think, and Adam, correct me if I'm wrong. Part of the sticking problem to some of this too is precedent. <coughs> so even though. I guess by letter of law, according to what Adam said, that you know the, these are on other people's property. Even though that's true, the borough has worked on these in the past, tacitly saying we're we're taking responsibility for the maintenance of them. That's how it's been done in the past. Not every in every case, but Mike's found. Most yeah. of that to be the case in the minutes. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to help the decision by the council along, I, w I would think first is if they think, if, if the general consensus or the majority even, Stormwater Authority members or the borough says 
I think we should own these things and I think we should maintain them, well then we don't need to spend a whole lot more time trying to dwell on the past and trying to figure out the precedent set. We need to start heading down the path Finance. of taking the ownership. But if they say, no, I don't think we should take ownership, I think we should head down those rabbit holes, then we got to get into the legal, trying to go further into the research with, with, with trying to find an ownership. So I think the first decision is, should we take, do you, do you guys want to take ownership of them or, or not? And, and know the answer to that. And if the answer is yes, we should, no matter what, we should be taking ownership of this, then, that's, then, then it's a clear path. It's a it's faster path. <clears throat> if you say, Man, no, I really think the property owner should, then we got to go back, then we got to go down the other path. Right, and, and, and I think there are two, I think that's right, there are two tracks. Mm -hmm. It's a property owner track, where it's clear the property owner owns to the middle of the stream, or it's, as you described, since the borough has done work in general throughout the channel over the years, and since we can't get grants unless we own them, the, the, we being the borough owns them, and then talk about that tract and what that means. Well, I think you can get grants if, if we don't own them. You just have to make the, the ownership clear in the grant. I mean, some grants that I've been involved with, it worked that way. Uh, that mm -hmm. clearly, like we just got a grant to test pathogens. Well, they wanted to make sure the landowner agreed with that. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. So you can have a three-party agreement, at least for some grants. I don't know what we're talking here, but it seems to me like one of the things that should be brought up right in the beginning is okay. The landowner owns it. They authorize us to fix it. Who's going to fund that? That question needs to be answered before we can move anywhere, it seems. Well, it depends which track you're on. No, if, no. If, and so that's the borough council has to decide which, yeah. which track, because you look at that wall, and it, I'm not an engineer, but most of that wall is failing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a long wall. And my guess is to replace something like that, you, you're clearly talking six figures. Oh, easily. Yes. Clearly. Yeah, and, 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 I, and, and so we're back. We're, we're back to what a homeowner can afford. Right, yeah, so the question is if, if the council makes a decision that these walls are responsible to the property owner, to Chad's point, when it fails, is it reasonable to ask a property owner to replace a wall that's valued at a greater value than their property? Right, right. And that's the discussion that well, borough council has to make. Right. Ah, and and sure. the, other, the other devil to the side is when they fail, they have to be repaired. That's correct. That's right. We have, it's, we it's have, not like we have a, federal mandates we need to meet. It becomes a public safety issue. Correct. It, it's not and, like a sidewalk where we know they're bad and they've been bad for 20 years and we pay the lawsuits when people trip and fall. This is a different horse. This is a different animal. That's right. And, and, and to, to Pat's point, I, I am hard pressed to find a grant for you to do work on private property. Well, I can get you some. The, uh, the, I'm going to uh, get a federal grant the, for it, I'll tell you that. Well, this is, uh, the Conservation District has grants. It's dirt roads and low volume. And low volume was expanded to include alleys and things like that. And I don't know if, Robbie, we've been, you have to be certified uh, to take part of it. But they're doing that every year, a couple of them. And what's the dollar amount for those grants? They're in the six-figure range. Yeah, they go in and uh, fix up dirt roads to keep them from eroding. And that's how it started out. But who's the they ran out of, Is this like a NIFWIF kind of thing? No, no, it's uh, I forget who we know they get the money from. That. It's a state yeah, that, thing, I think. Yeah, there's it's a dirt gravel road program that goes through Deb. Muslim yeah, and, and yeah, sure I think we should be looking at yeah. for <clears throat> some of our alley work anyhow. It's, like, it's low volume roads, but yeah, there are ones out there that. Work on private property. Well, I think I think on the twenty sixth, Pat, if you can be there, be there, and let's let's talk this out because it it'll probably be an hour discussion mm -hmm. <laughs> because this some people have no idea that what this means. Most of the current borough council's not going to. Uh, no offense, but, but yeah, they're not going to know. They're not. They're, 
this is under the radar, but Believe it's pretty me. significant if it, if it fails. They'll hear about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, think, I think we did a, a fair job on that one. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the next, actually, two items, A, two on your agenda, and in, in the new bez, business, A, um, is about the Gettysburg Interloop project. So I'll just give you a quick up, uh, update on the, um, the scope and the schedule. Um, the scope has been reduced as far as we can get it now. I, of course, last month, you, you know, I, I did present to you guys that we didn't get the grants that we were hoping for, the H2O grants. Um, so we were in the process over the past month of trying to reduce the scope as much as we can to get something that we can move forward with. Uh, the council, whenever we presented to them at the last workshop, were pretty unanimous in, in that they wanted this project to still happen because we have um, the risk of losing some other grant money if we don't uh, move it forward with the CDBG money and the C2P2. So at this point, we've eliminated all of the alley, um, of Racehorse Alley, um, and we've eliminated the pipe that is on Chambersburg Street. So at this point, we'll only be building the pipe that goes from the creek under the railroad tracks to Racehorse Alley. It will set us up for automatic fixing of Chambersburg Street, but it won't include that at this point. We needed that H2O fund to be able to include that in this project. Um, the other thing that we did was we looked look at a couple of schedules. As I'd mentioned, um, the CDBG money ends, uh, or we need, to, we need to spend that by May of next year, and that's going to be in the next item. Charles is going to give you an update on the pol policy briefing. Um, but by <coughs> May of next year, we need to have the CDBG money spent. Um, so that's kind of the very latest that we have to start. If we, if we follow that and go into construction during the winter time, which isn't the best, um, we can wait until notice proceed for November and still get it done by May of, of, of next year, spring of next year. If we want to try to avoid the winter, then essentially we need to start construction uh, in June of this year, which is going to come around pretty quickly. Yeah, um, that, need, that gives us time for, yeah, there's the, the schedule Charles pulled up. But if you want to scroll down just a little bit, Charles. So here in this light item is the, um, I'll keep going a little bit further. Here's the notice proceeding. June of, of this year is, is the earliest that we would have to go to, or we can't, that's the earliest we can go to construction at this point. Um, and we can push it back as far as November, but then that's going to take us construction through the winter, which we prefer not to do. I mean, you can do curb and sidewalk pipe work during the winter, but uh, of course, it's for obvious reasons, it's better not to do construction. Now, you've discussed this with the borough council. <clears throat> No, that's coming up after this meeting. Okay, so you're so actually getting a preview okay. on what's coming up again in an hour. We Got updated it. them at the, at the workshop that we didn't get the grant. Right. And kind of the way that we left it with them at the, at the workshop meeting was, you know, do you still want to push forward here or, or forfeit the CDPG and the C2P2 money? And they said, no, 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 we don't want to forfeit those funds. We want to push forward with it. That's, what, that's kind of the takeaway that we got from that workshop. So um, now we're back saying, okay, we've, we've gone back, did our homework, Reduce the scope as much as we could, um, put together some schedules for how we can proceed forward here, um, and then that's where that's where we stand um, currently with with the financing for the project. So, so. could you move it, Charles, to the top? So they're going to have to make a um, a decision. Them being the borough council um, by the March meeting, the March 11th meeting. Right, right here, there it March, is. March 11th. Yep. March 11th meeting, that's whenever I'll need authorization to advertise the project. <coughs> so by then, they'll have to have a decision made on, um, on whether they want to fund, fund the or project. Or something in between, but between March and July. Exactly. If, if, if we want to try to go with that earlier schedule, it has to happen at the March meeting. That could get pushed back if, if, we, if we want to push back construction in, into the winter. There's about a four-month about a four month window uh -huh. in between well, yeah, early four months from from now to June, but um, if we started after, if the project started after July, if it started in August, you'd still have pretty decent weather. And since you're only going from the stream up to, how, how long do you estimate that's going to take? I mean, I know the railroad's going to be the big deciding factor there because they're a pain to work with anyhow. Yeah, and it, Charles is going to scroll, scroll back down the hallway to the bottom. We gave two different construction periods. If we, if we try to get started, like John's saying, with some good weather, we think we can get the project done in about 155 days. 
if we push back into the winter, then we're we're increasing that to 180 just to deal with the winter weather. Yeah. So that's kind of a ballpark of where we think we're going to be. So if okay. we could, if that project could start by August, we would be in a shorter schedule, mm -hmm. provided we can get everything tied up with the railroad so that we can bore. Yep. And and so let's go to my favorite subject: the, the dollars. So yeah, that's yeah. if if you'll let us just we can Keep that's going. the policy briefing summary. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and jump right into that, Charles, if you wanted to pull yep. that up. So I'm just some of you might not be familiar with this, but council people in council get these updates on any number of projects. They're called policy briefing summaries. Uh, it's a a lengthy document that keeps getting added to as things evolve with the, with the project. And so this actually. The first iteration of this occurred uh, all the way back in uh, Four years 2020. Ago. Yeah. Um, wow. So you can see how long we've been dealing with this. And so anything in yellow is the latest entry uh, with this project. And, and just for the interest of the audience listening at home, I'm just going to read from this so that it can kind of give the background on some of these things. The first section of a policy briefing summary is what is staff asking the council to consider? And so this uh, latest entry is the Gatesburg Interloop Phase B1, B2 project has languished since the first drafting of this policy briefing summary. Phase B1, B2 is an ambitious project and must be coordinated with other agencies providing multiple types of services and infrastructure. In the short term, through spring of this year, 2024, the issue needing borough council attention is that of appropriating adequate funds to get a segment of the larger project completed by May of 2025. If construction on this segment is not completed by May of 2025, the borough will forfeit approximately $250,000 in community development block grant money. So just so everyone's clear on what we're talking about, there's a map included in the policy briefing summary. This larger pro uh, map here shows what was phase B. It was the area of Racehorse Alley from Franklin, Franklin Street to <coughs> North Washington Street, turning a corner from North Washington Street at Ra Racehorse Alley down to Constitution Avenue, which crosses the railroad tracks that Chad Clayball just spoke about. So this phase B has been broken down into phase B to A, which is now the Racehorse Alley segment, which we are not talking about right now. We're talking about phase B to B, which is a segment on North Washington Street from Racehorse Alley to Constitution Avenue. Moving on, uh, I'm going to pass over the funding section of this because that's where we get into the nitty gritty. So let me just go back to the down to the background on this. Uh, the background, it's important to note the revisions to this narrative from February 19th of 2020 noted above. The project has languished in multiple obstacles, both financial and logistical, over the past four years. Those financial challenges noted in the section above were exacerbated by logistical challenges with the coordination of the Gettysburg Municipal Authority's interceptor project, as well as challenges with maintenance issues on Stevens Run. And then it just goes into what I just explained, that the B project is broken now down into three phases. B1, we're not even talking about because that's from Buford Avenue, Racehorse Alley to Franklin Street. Uh, and then B2A, which is Racehorse Alley, now B2B, which is uh, North Washington Street. Okay, let's get into the money. So um, I wanted to show everyone just for a more visual representation of the struggles the borough has been experiencing with grant money over the last four years. This is actually from the budget message that was just put on the borough's website for 2024. This is a listing of all the large grants that the borough has applied for since 2012 up until last year. And you can see there is a lot of grant activity in the years 2012 through, say, the early part of 2019. Um, where the borough applied for millions and millions of dollars worth of grant funding and were awarded millions and millions of dollars in grant funding. It, for some inexplicable reasons, we have our theories as to why 
that's all but dried up for the borough uh, since 2019. Uh, to note, last year, 2023, the borough applied for a raise grant. Um, they apply, we applied for uh, traffic transportation alternatives grant for 500,000, um, the Greenways Trails grant for 250, uh, ARPA funds for the county, H2O large and H2O small, all added up, better part of um, $12 million, and essentially the only thing that was awarded was the 902 recycling grant which is a whole different other program that the borough is involved and NIFWF with. NIFWF wasn't even on there, was NIFWF it? NIFWF was not even on there. It is down here in some of the, here oh. in 2022, you see the NIFWF oh, right oh, okay. here. It is. Chesapeake yeah. Bay, Pennsylvania local government, 500,000. Yeah. Uh, and as we know, the stormwater authorities applied for that for, I think it was four cycles and each, right. each one was, was denied. So that's the frustration to the financing of these really large projects which because we keep applying for these and keep getting denied this project keeps getting stalled and now we're at a point where if we don't do something th the funds we do have secured for the project are going to be forfeited so what we've discovered um, I'll just read this again for, since 2019 borough has applied for multiple grants to fund construction on the Gettysburg Interloop all the grants applied for only in with all the grants applied for only two and relatively small amounts have been awarded that being C2 P2 in the amount of two hundred fifty two thousand five hundred dollars in 2021 and a green trails grant in the amount of one hundred sixty eight thousand five hundred dollars in 2022 all, all the boroughs grant fund applications and awards since 2011 can be seen in the exhibit that I just showed you Additionally, the borough has committed roughly $250,000 of its CDBG funds program years 2021 and 2022 toward this project. Both the C2P2 and CDBG grant monies have utilization timelines associated with them. If the borough does not use them by the end uh, or by mid-2025, these funds are going to be forfeited. So um, it's important to note that the borough, Stormwater Authority, GMA, and even Columbia Gas, we do a really good job of partnering on these projects. Uh, this is not the only project that's really big in nature where various agencies have collaborated together. Um, and we don't envision this to be any different. Um, we did mention within the last month an opportunity for uh, infrastructure money uh, alone program that's provided by the state of Pennsylvania called PennVest. Uh, PennVest may be a good financing solution for other major infrastructure projects in the borough moving forward. Unfortunately, in this case, time is too limited to explore PennVest for the inner loop <coughs> projects as it takes a minimum of four months for the application for a low, uh, for a low interest loan to, to process. The there is not enough adequate time to, to do this PennVest with uh, meeting the CDBG fund timeline. There's a whole little narrative here about what PennVest's vision is and what they do. They're a low interest loan uh, opportunity for municipalities. Uh, and if I scroll down here, we can talk about how much is possible there. So essentially, the current rates are uh, for a one to five year term, uh, a rate of 1.743%, which is a really low interest rate. If you're doing a six to 20 year term, 2.179. There's no origination fees, no bond counsels required, no minimum to borrow. However, projects need to be over $100,000. Uh, and then if you're doing it for a project that serves one municipality, you can borrow up to $11 million. Or if you're doing a cross jurisdictional project up to $20 million. The other nice thing about PennVest money is you can use it to, for local match. So if you do apply for a grant, uh, most grants, you do have a local match requirement. Uh, you can use PennVest money as your, your local match. Just putting that in the, in the back of everyone's brain because moving forward as we get into the channel walls discussion, when we're talking about a four or $5 million project, PennVest may be an opportunity to fund a larger project like that at a very reasonable rate. But that's not going to solve our short-term problem. So what SAF is proposing is um, 
essentially finding between our partners a funding formula that will bridge the gap. Uh, right now, this project is about $1.3 million, Chad, I think. Um, and so we have a, a, a sizable hole to fill. And there is value for both GMA and the Stormwater Authority in that there are, there are potable water components to this project and there are stormwater components to this project that if the borough, Stormwater Authority, and the Municipal Authority partner, everyone can get their work done at a significant savings as opposed to that organization doing it solely on their own. So what we're proposing is Stormwater Authority um, providing about two hundred and thirty thousand dollars, the board of GMA of two hundred move that up a little higher. So the board of GMA two hundred twenty five thousand and then uh, the borough would pick up the, the balance at two hundred seventy three thousand five hundred dollars. So um, if you remember what we said we currently have seven hundred ten thousand dollars in the bank. So we would be eating into it for, uh, by about 230000 And this is assuming that GMA yeah. gets on board with this, right? And which we have yet to have. Spend. And Mark Geist, their director, is, is aware of this and is approaching their board with this same topic. I think the only thing that I have to add to, to that is we also did double check that what Charles said there is in the bank. It's still enough also to do the Bream Alley wall. So you can do both of those two projects, regardless of the fact that in July there's another round of billings, so collections, so that I'll put you in a better spot. But there is enough money in the bank for both of those two projects next year. And, and remind us what the Bream Alley number is. Uh, we were estimating it at uh, 230 to 250,000. Uh -huh. um, 60 or two thirds of that, so six percent of that would be Stormwater Authority. The other one third would be municipal authority, GMA, and it's going to pick up one third of the cost. Okay. So we have enough cash. Well, in the Bream Alley, the way it sounds, those bills aren't going to come until after right. July, anyhow. So yeah. it's going to be a while. Yeah, even this project is not going to be until after July. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, we could, like you said, you could put it in a short term, right. higher interest rate. We should. Yep. We should move that to short term and we will be using that money for 90 days so we'll get some interest well this is a lot to chew on it is and unfortunately we, we are going to need a decision from these three organizations within a month um, by certainly by the end of March and uh, which reminds me that next month we actually are not it's planning a meeting, for a meeting right uh, which if, if this is something you want to make a decision tonight, great. If not, we, we should probably schedule another meeting for you to formalize something next month. Okay. Are there any questions so far? I mean, um, just without getting into too much detail. So part of the project involves stormwater, correct? Yes. And just in... What's that valued at? What is that? <laughs> the, st the stormwater pipe that ultimately is to fix the Chambersburg Street issue will run from Stevens Run under the railroad tracks or the boring to, to the alley. There's a new stormwater okay. pipe, about a 30 inch pipe. Sorry if I missed this. What does it mean in the parentheses there, less than the 320,000 stormwater line construction estimate? What did that mean? When, it, when you broke down how much? Yeah, that's what I was looking for actually. Thank you for yeah, calling it's in that the out. Yellow. Yeah, so. The stormwater component to this is valued at three hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and staff's asking two hundred and thirty thousand. So that, that some of it's also being paid for by C two P two, right? A bunch of other Habby right. generated funds and CDBG. So Habby's agreed to contribute. Yes, oh, in yeah. fact, I just pulled that up. Uh, yeah, show the. So yeah. this is our funding strategy. If your eyes are going to bug out, here you go. <laughs> so we're looking at a $1.285 million project. Of that, we have 250000 of CDBG. Right. We have another 200000 in DCNR C2P2 funds. 
that everything in green is all the work that Habby has done on the borough's behalf uh, to raise money for this project. Uh, and they've already given some of that, so some of that's already been spent. Uh, that's the yellow line. Uh, and then we, we need to find the balance. So uh, 230, we're asking from the Stormwater Authority, GMA 225, and then the, the, the delta there uh, that would be covered by the borough. Those are the three bottom lines. Well, it seems that, from my perspective, that we've leveraged this thing about as much as we can. <coughs> um, we're getting um, economies of scale by working together with everybody. GMA and the boroughs um, entering into into the fray as well with their reserves if they agree to do this. Right. Um, I, I know I've, I've looked at this before. I don't see how it can get any better. Uh, in fact, it can get worse if the numbers go up. Oh, if we lose CDBG, it's going to get really worse for everybody in the borough. It, that would be cataclysmic for the borough to lose that direct entitlement benefit, which is what would be on the table if we give that money back. Mm -hmm. You're looking to proceed. What's that? You're looking to proceed tonight. Okay. Yeah, I, I think. I, that. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't go go ahead and. Yeah, we're not going to do this. anything more in March. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, so I will entertain a motion, if everybody's okay with this right now, to uh, commit. $230,000 of Gettysburg Stormwater Authority reserves towards this project, uh, assuming the numbers that are there now. Um, so we need counsel. Are you, are you writing the motion? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm no. just I'm making a note for myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who, who to hold accountable for? Yeah. 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 Well, Which part of the deal is this? Phase B two B. B two B. Okay. To commit two hundred thirty thousand to the Gill B two B project. Project. In in concert with Gettysburg Municipal Authority and the borough. Question: Is that sure. caveat such that if they don't follow through, we we don't either? That's how I would take that. What's that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I would say we would revisit it if these numbers change. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, if, if somebody if we, drops out, the whole project's got a problem. Right. Yeah. So this is a contingent on everybody right. else. We will revisit this yeah. commitment if. Uh, the other entities do not um, contribute to that, to, to those numbers, yeah. to those limits. <clears throat> Will you want a formal resolution to this effect? Couldn't hurt. Okay. That's what I, I, I figured. Think we ought to. The, yeah. Yeah. And that can be done retroactively in April, right? Yeah. I mean, why don't we just do it now? Well, you'll want to type that out in more detail. Yeah, resolution is a form. Okay, all right. Yeah. See if everybody else is on board. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We well, want? let's let's okay. just let's so just make this a um, a contingent. Well, thing. we make a motion to have the re resolution, and the motion would be that we commit two hundred thirty thousand dollars to the two B whatever uh, contingent on, on other funding. Resolution. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Contingent on what? Other funding sources. You're, you're, you're essentially expressing your intent to yes, take action yeah. at a future meeting. So that other, other people can say, well, you know, right. yeah, where's we're, the storm we're authority? Yeah, well, they're, they're intending to do this. Right. As long as you're going to do it. <laughs> well, then and all then we you, have to do yeah. is say that we intend to do yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Well, contingent on another. Contingent on another. Yeah. to the Gill B2B project. Um, Contingent on other funding sources. I don't think it's 
that vague, contingent on, on the funding sources for, as presented by the GMA in the borough. By GMA in, in the borough. Facebook okay. borough, yeah. Okay. You'll probably you have an MOU you? between all three so of who's, them. Can somebody move this? Yep. Let's, Karen, why don't you read this again? Motion to commit $230,000 to the Gill B2B project contingent on other funding sources by GMA and Gettysburg Borough. As presented by right as mm -hmm. as as presented today, as presented on mm -hmm. two fourteen, yeah. fourteen two twelve two fourteen. Otherwise, yeah. we're all in trouble. Right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> two twelve. Okay. Was someone? I'll second it. Okay. So who who made the motion, Charles? Who made the motion? I'll, I'll make a motion. Okay, I'll Pat made the motion. We have a second. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Is phase two B or not? Two B. Yeah. 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 Why, Why is that? I was waiting. I was waiting. Lying in there. All in favor of this motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Same sign. Not hearing any. It passes. Thank you. So the borough will hear about this soon. In an hour. Yeah. <laughs> or less. Um, Anything else? Land studies? So I, I can be quick here. I did have a couple of remarks prepared, um, mainly for, for, for Kurt's benefit with this project. Um, but I'll be real quick, because I know we have another meeting coming up here in 13 minutes. But All right. um, So our Culp's Run Stream Restoration, big project for the borough to satisfy our permit requirements. If you remember, we needed a little over 50,000 um, pounds of total suspended, suspended solids. And we end up achieving over 100,000 um, annually so it served all of our permit needs and then some um, the price tag for this project was about three quarter of a million dollar project uh, we completed it in 2022 the permit that we re required for it has a five-year post-construction maintenance period every year for five years you have to report to DEP um, for the first two years biannually and then the last three years annually um, our consultant land studies goes out and does uh, maintenance procedures on that um, restoration. They basically are spraying for invasives. We've been very lucky so far with the project. Our, our reporting that we get back every year is that it's looking great. Um, we're starting to get some mature vegetation there. There has been no um, need for further construction in terms of erosion um, issues. Um, so the project's really, really doing well. Um, but we can need to continue to spray the invasive plants. Mm -hmm. and. To do the um, to do the annual reporting, land studies contract. If you can remember back, for the solicitor's recommendation last year was that we do this on an annual basis instead of just have a five-year uh, long term with them. Um, last year, the contract they originally started at 19.6. We got them down in 12 to, or 15.2, 15,200 dollars to do the maintenance last year. Um, their estimate this year. Oh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. It, it went from it was, last year's was thirteen thousand two hundred dollars. This year, it's up to fifteen thousand two hundred. The, the two thousand dollar increase is directly related to aerial drone imagery collection. So, and, and I talked to Reed, the the engineer for land studies, and he said it's something that we always recommend. We we'd like to see that on these type of projects, but it's not vital to the permitting requirements. DEP doesn't require that. So if you don't want to do that, then it's the same as last year at 13.2. Uh, if you'd like to have the drone imagery, then the contract should be at 15.2. Um, so that is the one question you guys will have to wrestle with here a little bit. Um, the, the drone footage is kind of self-explanatory. They fly it with a drone. Do the foot, they can see the, the hydraulics a little bit better. They include that with the permitting the DEP. Um, it, it's partially for, for, you know, if you ever... Recently, we applied for a governor's award. You can use those kind of things right. for promotion of the project with your MS4 permitting and those kind of things. So there's there's that component of drone footage, um, a relatively low cost of $2,000 if you want to do it. Again, you don't have to do the drone footage if you don't want to do the drone footage. Did we have that last year? No. No, this is new. What, how long is the drone footage a couple of minutes or this is 15 minutes 20 minutes what's 
and I don't know if I know the answer. The one that we originally did with the county was a, a I don't know, it was a several minute video clip, and then it was a pile of photos too. Okay. You know, they take photos, and still still photos, and then uh, it was like a ten minute long video clip. Okay. Uh, this is from the uh, Gettysburg National Military Park, right? Yes. Do have permission? Yes, yes, we do, believe it or not. It, yeah. there's, there's a caveat. They have to take off from the Borough Public Works garage, fly it, and land. land. At the, they Back can't at the take borough. off or land on the National Park Service right. property. Mm -hmm. But yes, we can do the, the journey, fly the journey. And this is a, our third year into this, right? Is that right? This will be the second, second year. year. Yeah, second. the project completed in 2022. <clears throat> right. Last year, 23, was the first year of maintenance and monitoring. So this will be the second year of maintenance and monitoring. So, so we this would have four reports, or four, four visits, two reports this year. Starting next year, then we'll be down to just one report right. annually. And so we would have comparison data? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any any uh, comments, I, suggestions here? I just think for the longevity of the project and how big it was, that this is probably good data to have on file. Yeah, I, I like the idea that we would have comparison data. It I'm might, not saying do it every uh, year. Maybe no. next year we skip. Skip it, yeah. But it might provide, you know, uh, rationale for extending beyond the five-year period if you can show that it hasn't deteriorated or maybe even improved. Uh -huh. Good point. So what I'm hearing consensus is we'll go with a little more expensive contract and do the drone footage because it, it does add some value for us. And John's right. I mean, we can, we can take a look at it next year and say, well, we don't need it. Or or continue yeah. So if I can help you with a motion, it would be a motion to, you ready, Karen? <laughs> to approve the COPS run yearly maintenance and monitoring contract with land studies at the rate of $15,200. Correct. Say that again. Tape. I got it on tape. You got it on tape? <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'll move that. Okay. Charles? Second? Second. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Same sign. Not hearing any. It passes. Thank you. Any other questions about that? About anything? We're at the public comment phase. Uh, <laughs> the public is here, <laughs> and the borough council is over there, too. Um, not hearing any, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank Second. you. Second. Thanks, John. All in favor, indicate saying aye. 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 This motion, this, this meeting is open. Thank you.